We're here again with Chef Otto, one week before Christmas. What are you going to show us today, Otto? We're boiling out a turkey for Christmas. Okay, Michael, before we start, we have a tradition that before we start working, especially preparing a meal, we have a cheer. Can you join me have a cheer for Christmas? We also have Vince, Otto's cheers. brother. Cheers, Buon Natale, many good years. Cheers. Okay, now we have our fresh turkey. Can you tell us about the turkey, how you should pick a turkey? Well, it depends on your family size, the size of your turkey. If you want 10 pounds, 15 pounds, this is about 20 pounds. But if you want a real fresh turkey, some of the grocery stores do offer turkeys not previously frozen, or you can always go down the farm to get turkeys. Okay? Now, you have make sure you have your wings, your legs. Now, when you get a turkey, First, or if you buy it at the store, you have a bag. In the cavity, the neck cavity, you have a bag. And on the back side, the cavity, you have turkey neck. Now, don't throw these out. Turkey neck, you can always use for roasted, or you can always make soup with it. And in the bag, you have turkey liver, and the gizzards, and the heart, which they missed the heart on this one. Somebody must have dug it. Now, with the hearts, and the gizzards, you're going to make a gravy. You can make a gravy with it, or you can also make a stuffing, giblet stuffing, for your turkey. And so you put that aside, or you freeze, or you cook, or you do whatever you want with it. Put it aside. And now when you uh, bone out a turkey, you can start from the back side. Okay? I don't know if you can see it here, Mike. Start from the back side, all along the backbone. Make sure you point your knife towards the bone. And dismantle the wing right at the joint. Very easy to come off. You don't have to cut any bones, you just, just follow the bone contour. Be careful, you don't cut your fingers. If you're not sure, you can always use the wire mesh gloves. I don't want nobody to say, well, auto show me this way, now I cut my fingers. Uh, same thing with the leg, it's got a joint. I have to face it this way, it's easier for me. short, I guess. Okay, disjoint the leg, disjoint the wing, just follow the meat contour. The bone, follow the bone. Have your knife pointed towards the meat, or, I'm sorry, towards the bone. Try not to butcher up your bone, your meat. Don't cut up all your meat. Half your turkey. Now you do the same for the other side. Try not to tear or poke the skin, the skin you're going to use as a, to wrap around your turkey like a casing. Use another joint here for the leg.
the other wing. The joint right here just comes right up. They come apart again, and the carcass again. Be careful you don't puncture the skin again. Skin's gonna be used for your casing. Okay, here you have your carcass. And this you could use it for uh, if you could brown it and put the oven brown it with a little bit of tomato paste, vegetables, and uh, you can make gravy with it. You can make gravy with it if you were, uh, or you can boil it, or I'm sorry, simmer it, make stock with it. And if you don't let it boil long enough, you'll have a lot of meat in here for chicken sal or turkey salad sandwiches, or put in the soup to make a nice turkey soup. Here you have your carcass, save your carcass waste. So now here you have the turkey here with the two wings and two legs. What you could do, well, first of all, you have to bone out, bone out the, the, the thighs. Again, there's another joint here. Careful when you use knife towards you. Don't do it. Like they say, do what I say, not what I do. Okay, here's your thigh bone. Again, you put with the carcass. That was quick. <laughs> or soup. Or now another thing you could do. I normally don't do it, but you could do it with the drumstick. Okay, I'll cut the drumstick off. You could put the drumstick into the roast, but you got 13 bones here, 13 ligaments. It's very time consuming. So normally I use use drumsticks and I do it just roast the drumsticks alone. But if you want, you can take the ligaments out. Like I said, there's 13 of them. And then put it in with the roast. The reason why I'm Usually don't put it in is because sometimes I'm afraid that if you tell uh, uh, your family or whatever that's boneless and you happen to miss one or two bones and you have a child or somebody that uh, eats it by mistake and then you feel terrible. So I just usually, again, you can use this to roast it or you can also poach it for, poach it or, or, or simmer it for soups. Stews. Now here's the wings, the smand, the wings are here. They just break very easy. Now, the wings, again, if you want to bone them out and put them in here, there's not really a lot of meat. It's a lot of work, a lot of meat. So what I like to do with these, again, roast them with the legs, with the drumstick, or you can make soup with it. Okay, here you have the whole turkey. 
you have a choice. Normally what you could do is make a whole roast out of it, which you get a good sized turkey roll. Like this one here probably be about 12 to 15 pounds, 12, 13 pounds. Normally what a lot of people like to do, and I like to do, is cut in half. Okay, you got the breast here, you got the thigh part here, cut in half. Okay. Now you have two roast. I get the skin here. It's good for stock. So you have two roasts here, two smaller roasts, which is still, for the average family, still big enough. Now, when you do the roast, make sure you, like, kind of mix the white and the dark together. Don't have all just the white up here and the dark down here and all of a sudden. So mix it where you have a combination of both. You're going to lose some fat part here, the skin. Depends how fat your turkey is. Here. Uh, now, we have the roast here. You have a little bit of fatty part just to trim it off. Now, some people stuff their turkey at this point. They, they stuff it with some kind of a, either bread stuffing or rice stuffing or sausage stuffing. You know, whatever is your pleasure. Or you just spice it and roll it this way. Now, some of the spices I like to use, uh, but again, you can use whatever you want. First of all, I think I have some fresh spice, fresh herbs. If you have parsley, rosemary, like the summertime you have a lot of stuff in your garden. I have some, uh, some basil here. This has been previously frozen. Actually, it was off my garden, so now I'm... Some basil. Okay, when you buy fresh herbs from the grocery store and you have some left over, you know, the average person, all they do is they find the garbage can and throw it out. If you can freeze it, I mean, it's not as lively as it was, but the flavor, if you smell, if you, I wish you could smell, it still smells from, the uh, same as when it came from the garden. A little bit of rosemary. Depends how, how strong you want it, or... I'd like to put a little bit of oregano. Again, if I had fresh oregano, I would definitely use it. Yeah, it depends how strong. Uh, oregano is, is a very, uh, it could be strong, and maybe sometimes it could be over, overpowered if you put too much in there. A little seasoning. I got poultry seasoning here just a bit. my garlic and I freeze it this way when I need it, just chop it as you need it. Especially in uh, October, November, or September when the garden, garlic is in season, you go to a farm or you go somewhere and you get maybe 5-10 pounds. You peel it and you put it in the freezer when you want it, voila. And then as soon as you're done with it, put it back in the freezer. And you get you can keep that for a long time. Now, oh, I got some salt and pepper. Can't forget salt and pepper. You can use sea salt if you want. You can use coarse salt in there. Kosher. Fresh ground pepper is nice. Again, when you're roasting this, you definitely want to put some spices on top anyway. So this is just the flavor in the middle. Okay, Otto, now where you have it all seasoned, can you show us 
what's ne what the next step is. Okay, remember you season, you put whatever season you want in there. You cover it. Remember I told you not to uh, uh, pierce the skin? Okay, your skin can be used like a casing or sometimes it's just... Okay. You get a butcher twine. I don't know if you'd want to make a butcher knot, but if you know, just tie a knot the way you normally would do it. Don't make it too tight, because you'll, you'll just because the, the member of the turkey is very, very fragile and will spread all over the place. And you won't have a nice even knot. So tie it, like you like to tie it in the middle first, and then the two ends. Now, if you're poaching these, if you're not roasting them, you could wrap them in saran wrap and poach them in saran wrap. But only if you're poaching them. If you're roasting them, you should tie them just the way I'm doing right here and just roast them like you would a regular, in a, a regular turkey. Now, roasting these shouldn't take much more than a couple hours. About 350 or 190 Fahrenheit. Now, you can, when you roast it, again, uh, halfway through, you can put some roast potatoes with it. Carrots, uh, carrots, onions. This time of year, even with the squash, turnips, potatoes. Are we? Potatoes. Potatoes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. See how it's coming nice together. Of course, when you're halfway roasting, don't forget to put in a little bit of what, Mike? When you're roasting, halfway through, you know when uh, your turkey starts getting caramelized and it starts smell very pretty, throw a little bit of vino. That's it. In your roasting pan. That's it. Well, you gotta drink some too, though. <laughs> okay, here it is, all tied up. It's not gonna go anywhere now. There. And you have your roast turkey for Christmas.